Hi, I'm David, welcome back, and today we'll be looking at the Samsung SmartThings set of accessories. Here we have the SmartThings lineup. We have the presence monitor, which is a little keyring type tag, so you can keep it in your handbag. When you come home in a certain area, it will alert the system and it can respond to you. We have the Smart Multi, which is a magnet open and close sensor and an orientation sensor so it knows up, down and movement. I think it also has a moisture sensor in there as well. We have the motion sensor so that when the beam detects motion you can have something triggered. And the power outlet which is controlled by the smart hub so you can have it turn things on and off remotely. There is a power limit to how much you can draw through it which is 12 amps. Although it's a 13 amp plug with a 13 amp fuse in it the power draw you can put through there is only 12 amps but that should be enough for most uses. I wouldn't recommend putting a high wattage heater through it. Uh, we're going to use it for the garden fountain but we're going to demonstrate it with a table lamp. Here we have our setup ready to go. You've got a standard desk light with a plug. Show that that's working. We'll then add this to it, leaving that permanently switched on from the mains, and it will then be controlled from the smart plug. So let's go to the Smart Things app. Unplug the light. Plug in the smart things plug and you've got a blue light that comes on just here showing that it's ready to connect we'll click add it's found an outlet select that we'll let it call outlet because that makes perfect sense but you can rename it here if you want click done save and confirm the device we can now see that it's here and it's currently off plug the light in but we'll flick it on at the switch so using the app we'll turn it on and off. You can just hear that click and there's a little blue indicator on the side as well in case it's a long lead and you can't really tell what it's turning on and off so just by looking at it you will know as well. Without doing any further setup it works straight away with the Google Home Assistance. Hey Google, turn off the outlet. Alright, turning off the outlet. Hey Google, turn on the outlet. Okay, turning the outlet on. And there we have the smart power outlet set up from Samsung SmartThings. Here we have the Samsung SmartThings motion sensor and we already have the app loaded after doing the smart power outlet. So we will first of all show you the back of it. This is the mounting plate with a little template so you just drill your holes through there and then put the screws through there which are provided with the wall plugs if you're going to mount it on a wall that you want to have permanently fixed or you could use the sticky pads that are provided and again I'll just sticky pad it onto there and then onto the wall which you can then unclip or it could even be just single screw slot fitted like so, so it can mount to the wall and lift off. All the two screws into wall plugs or into a wooden beam without the wall plugs. Go to activate it. Pull that out. 
and is if you push in there and there you can pull the front cover off to get to the battery and there's a reset switch in there as well. Open the app, add, yeah, we found a motion sensor, click save, and OK. The motion sensor's now added, so let's see what we can do with it. It's got a temperature sensor in there, battery monitor. So. You can see it responds. What I'll do is come to if this then that. Come to my applets. Add a new one, if this, if smart things, motion, Connect. Just add a new switch and motion sensors. Authorize those. Create trigger, then what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the garage to turn on the garage light when it senses motion, but for now we'll just use the light that we have here. Light wave lighting, turn the light on. And we'll have the dining living room light. Create action. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll turn our lights off. Okay, Google. Turn the dining room lights off. All right, turning the living room dining off. I'll just be still for a moment for it to stop sensing motion. And now I'll create a second trigger so when it isn't sensing motion it will turn the lights off. Okay, we couldn't use if this and that to turn the lights off, but we'll try stringify. So I've loaded that up. I'm going to come to my things, come to the hub and reconnect. And again, we need to allow the new items that you've got. And authorize all of those. Okay, that's gone through. So it will start a new flow.
We're going to use if this then that to connect to the light wave system. So we have to have both of those. Motion has stopped. Yep, swipe it across. And you run an app and it's generated the ID. So we'll save that. And we'll call it Garage Light. and we'll enable that flow. Come back to if this and that, and we'll now do a new one. If stringify, Wait, trigger. I'm going to change this to the garage light, but for now, we'll use the one here. So it's got motion, we'll just stay still for a short while. And the light goes off. I'll now move. And the light comes on. I'll go and mount that in the garage to have that working. Before I put this in the garage, I will just turn it over, close it up, and I will put some of these double-sided sticky pads on the mounting plate. And I will mount that in the garage. Here we have the SmartSense Multi. So it will do the magnet detection. Again, it's just like the motion sensor, but it has extra sensors in it as well. You've got a mounting template, back plate. Again, inside here, we've got some screws just to attach it to a window frame or door frame. They're not providing wall plugs because it's not to go into a wall, but into something like wood or plastic. So we've also got the sticky plates as well. Just pull that out to activate it. And again, we've got the ability to access the battery and there's a reset switch in there. Come to our smart thing screen, add, and it should start looking. And it's down the multi-purpose sensor. I'm going to name this one patio door. Done. And save. Okay. So you can see that it's sensing the door is closed and open and closed. That's actually quite a decent bit of distance it is sensing. So if you can't get it to line up perfectly, I'm sure that's not going to be much of a problem. I'm just going to use the 
sticky pads on there as you've got a plastic frame door and then we can have it set to alert the phones when the doors opened. I've just quickly changed phones because I want to have the alert come in on this phone. So there we go, it's phone media updated because it's phoning off the same account and that's fine. We'll just come to if this then that and we'll make a new applet. So if, again, we're gonna to have to add the sensor to it as well, like we did the previous ones. We have to add the new sensors like we did last time. So I have to come to services. Smart things. Edit. Again, we just need to select home and add the new detections to this device. Authorize that. Come back. And now we can add a new applet. If this. Smart things. Opened, patio door, create trigger. Then we just want to have a notification sent. Device name opened, that would be absolutely fine. Create the trigger and finish. So now if we open that, and of course we can then change what the alarm is. You can see that I'll take that off again, take that off from there. And you can just see it comes through. And of course we can change what that sound is. So it's more obvious as an audible indication that the door has been opened such as you can have it run an mp3 file so you can actually have a voice say patio door open that'll take a little bit more effort but you can have any notification it could just be a ringing bell it could be absolutely anything to just let you know what's happened i'll now go and mount that on the door by putting that bracket on putting the sticky tape there and again, I'll put that on there. And we'll see how that goes later. Before I quickly put it up, I just want to point out that there is a short little line just down there and there. So you can see which way round the sensors are meant to be because that way won't be as effective. And obviously that way won't be as effective or probably won't, yeah, that one doesn't even work. That's telling you it's open straight away, you can hear the phone going off. Yeah, so that's not the quick way. You've got to make sure that they do line up. Okay. Here we have the smart sense presence from the smart things set. Again, it's going to be a very similar process. Pull the tab out to connect the battery and we'll be able to just pop this open to get to the battery to change it. And again, a little reset button just in there. So 
we need to add that now to our set. I'm just going to name this. I will sensor. Done. And save. Okay. And so now then that's in my wife's handbag. We know that she's arrived home. Of course, you could just put it on your keyring, but it's, I think it's a little bit on the large side for a keyring because uh, I think it also does detect mobile phones. So it's more that if you're going to put it on. Um, your kid's backpack and you don't want to give them a mobile phone or something like that just when they're going out and about it's more useful for that uh, and you can just have it trigger things when you get home it can put lights on automatically it can enable certain devices um, it's experiment and find a use that suits you for that one it just comes with the welcome pack so I thought I'd set it up hi thank you very much for watching my latest video. I hope you found it interesting and that you go out and get yourself a Smart Things Hub, the L Lock and the camera as well. You can find a link to all of them in the description just down below. Uh, we've found it really helpful the lock. It's you know, sort of nice and easy to use once it's set up. It is difficult to set up so if you're unsure on how to do it I would say read the instructions but they're not that accurate. They are they have released a couple of sets of instructions and you have to be very, very accurate with the way you set it up. Um, if you pinch the wire, it won't work. If you don't line it up properly, it won't work. And the app can be a little bit buggy and you have to reset it all. You also have to remember that with each reset, you will lose your mobile phone keys. And those are soft keys which you have to buy each time they're normally bought in sets of five I believe. Uh, you'll have to check Yale's website to see how they're doing that at the time. But it is a brilliant system. The hard tags uh, do work very well. Again, registering them can be a bit of a problem. You've got to make sure you register them all properly and follow it slowly. But once they're registered, they do work well. The Smart Home Smart Thing set actually seems to be working very well. I've only had it set up for a few hours and going in and out of the garage, just putting the bits and pieces away after making the video, the light comes on almost immediately. It's not instant, no, so we can just turn it on at the light switch, but when I do leave the garage, it does then turn off again relatively quickly. I have seen that it turned off whilst I was actually still in the garage, but I was just standing there just putting small screws into packets, so wasn't a lot of movement wasn't enough to keep it motion sensing. So I might actually add a time delay to that using Stringify. I haven't seen a way yet to make custom sounds for the notification when the doors open. I thought it would um, give a distinct note. It doesn't, it's just a if this then that notification which pings the phone. Um, I'm sure I can probably find a way of making it more accurate. Um, if not, you still get the notification, but you could have it trigger other things so that when a door's open, a light comes on, um, which could be very useful for some people because they might not necessarily, be, they might be hard of hearing, so having a light trigger uh, would be good. Um, also, now when we leave the house, what we've got set up is that all the lights turn off automatically when we leave. The fountain uh, will turn off because that's connected to the smart plug. And so it's just all those little things that you can forget about when you're leaving. You can now just forget about. The heating turns off from the Nest system. Um, I'll be making a separate video on the Nest uh, later on because that's how we started the whole thing was with the, with Nest and uh, Philips Hue. Um, we then moved away onto Lightwave uh, because we wanted to do the whole house. Um, and the Philips Hue was going to be a bit too expensive because most of the lights you just want on and off and white. Whereas the Philips Hue, um, I can't see the point in having their white lights because they do the coloured ones, they are more expensive, but they do like, give a lovely ambience to the room. And again, I'll be making a video about that later on. 
But um, for now, thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you again soon for the next videos that I'll be doing. So if you did like it, give it a nice good thumbs up and hit subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.